America's Cup is a performance sport. Yes, can they do it? In its first challenge for the America's Cup, it's impossible not to be interested in something that is so different to what I've done as a day job for a few decades. The technical challenge of America's Cup is completely and critically dependent on the degree to which the, the team can understand the physics that govern the behaviour of the boat on the water. And that is exactly the same with Formula One car understanding the governing equations for the car, how the tyres will generate force as they go around the track, the way the aerodynamics create downforce that push those tyres into the road, and the way the suspension delivers that force to the wheel. So the similarities there and the approach uh, needed to prosper in either environment are, are very similar. In the boat world, of course, aerodynamics is crucial. The, the performance of the sail and, and the hull as it moves through the air makes a big difference to the performance of the boat but crucially it has the interaction with water. The F1 fluid dynamicists don't have to worry about, about the behaviour of water. They don't need to know about cavitation or ventilation and, uh, and they certainly don't have to deal with the interface between the air fluid and the water fluid at the surface where the two fluids meet. That's a big difference in, in the, the technical challenge. F1 teams have the great uh, privilege of being in a championship that rolls year on year on year and the teams are established, mature organisations which, uh, which just trundle from championship to championship. America's Cup uh, happens roughly every three, sometimes four years and that's a long time where you pour all your heart and soul into a vessel that you hope will carry your efforts to success. You might think that with that amount of time between competitions that it, it might be somehow hard to generate and maintain momentum for, for, for year after year before you get to the, the sharp end of, of the competition. You start on day one feeling like you are late and that feeling of we're behind, we're behind, we're behind just keeps coming at you for all of the time as you design the thing, as you build the thing, as you test it, as you put it on the water and you test it for real, and in, in the phase we are now where you're trying to, to, to sort of hone it to be ready for the racing. So there is no difficulty in maintaining momentum or, or responding with alacrity to it. The challenge is actually almost the opposite. It's how can you not burn out in the first six months? How to make sure that the sailors, the shore team, folk who have to do the cyclor work in the boat, how to make sure that they can all be fit and well and strong and awake at the point where the competition starts for real. The 37th America's Cup is blessed with a much greater number of challenges than, than last time and that heightens the anticipation and the excitement for everyone who's interested in the sport and certainly for us. It's quite hard to say with any certainty where we stand. From our viewpoint it feels like anyone is in with a shout if they have a good run into the competition. So our focus is on making sure that we get as close as possible to perfection with uh, delivering the capability that was, or the potential that was designed into the boat and having the sailors as familiar with it as they can by having as much quality time on the water. Well, my hopes for the competition are, you know, quite naturally that, that a team which has worked so hard for so long and has brought considerable ingenuity and dedication to the challenge, that they'll be rewarded for that by success in, in the competition of achieving you know, what's never been done in this country before, which is to, to win the cup.